Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday News Show. Now, Hugo's not here, I'm all by myself, which gives me carte blanche to do whatever I like. So, baby shark, do 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 do, baby shark, do 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 do, baby shark. So let's kick off with IFSC news and we are deep within the lead climbing season and everything moved from Chamonix to Briançon. In the men's comp, humidity seemed to hit the wall, making tops a tricky proposition. Japanese athletes dominated the podium, with Shuta Tanaka taking the first medal with a bronze. Next up was Hirito Shimuzu, who appeared in his second Briançon final. He climbed well, scoring the same points as Shuta, but count back to previous rounds left him with the silver medal. It was a competition of small margins, and eventually one extra move would seal it for Hidemasa Nishida. He climbed first and set the high point that no one else could match. Gold on his first World Cup podium. In the women's comp, it was another Japanese medal with Natsuki Chanji winning bronze. Natsuki has burst onto the scene this year and used some great moves to claim her medal. Slovenian Janja Garnbrecht, who by her own standards had a wobble in Chamonix, had something to prove in Briançon. She topped the route in great style, perhaps restoring some confidence. A silver medal for Janja, still in the hunt for the overall title. Japan's Qian Xiu was almost unknown coming into the season, but she's been blowing away the competition. She knows she needed a top and delivered. Another goal for her, her second of the season to add to that silver medal. Very, very interesting to see those Japanese athletes on top form in the lead World Cup competitions. We're used to them dominating the bouldering, so nice to see them step into a new field. Now, a few athletes missing, Adam Andre, Jesse Pilz, Shauna Coxie, Athletes resting, ready for the combined championship in uh, Japan. I think it's next month, so a few big names missing. British athletes did very well as usual. Uh, big shout out to Will Bosey, second final, second fourth place. Nice one, Will. Uh, Molly couldn't quite get to the height she did in Chamonix, but a solid 16th position for her, so nice one, Molly. Uh, if you fancy reading something a little bit different, Charlie Bosco, the IFSC commentator, is currently writing for UKC, and every he puts up his opinions, his views of the competition. And it's, it's good actually. It's a little bit different from a normal just straight write up. He gives some opinions, he has some insight into what we don't see. So all the behind the scenes stuff with the athletes and how they're feeling. Well worth a read on UKC. Okay, so now trad news and we're moving to the Lake District in the UK. British climber Anna Taylor has climbed the route Disorderly Conduct E86C at Recastle Crag. With the UK seeing high temps and humidity, Anna had to be patient, but sent the route despite the gear being less than ideal. This bold climb isn't in Anna's usual slab climbing style, but she coped well with the steep and physical moves. Nice one, Anna. Now some alpine climbing news and a route that's right at the top of my dream list of crags. I always screw up the pronunciation, but it's putri. Yeah, Flo, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah Putri Integral, which is a huge ridge line, line that goes from Italy and tops out on Mont Blanc, and it's been done in a super speedy time. Francois Cazzanelli and Andrea Stindl have completed the route in a blisteringly fast time of just 12 hours, 12 minutes. Francoise had it in mind to do the route in a single push from the valley floor. They set out from the La Sorgente campsite at 3.30 a.m. and pushed through to dawn to top out in the early afternoon. They then headed back down to the campsite via the normal Italian route in a round trip time of 15 hours and 55 minutes. If you've ever seen that route or just skied in Cormier or just looked up at it, it is absolutely massive. Most teams take about three days to do it, including the walk-in, there's a bivy in the middle and you've got to top it out. Some people stay halfway up Mont Blanc and it's, it's, it's involving uh, and it's super long, but those guys just smashed through it. I'd love to do that route, so it's been wonderful reading about it. Now, Arterix athlete Nuno Caprez, straight off the back of the Arterix Alpine Academy, headed up high to do the Voix Petit on the Grand Crapassin. Nina had attempted the route with Sean Villanueva, but bailed due to bad weather. She returned with Martina Kufa and climbed the tricky 12 pitches in 11 hours, including the 8B Crux and 8A section. Nina is a master of hard alpine rock climbs, and this is another tick on her impressive list of achievements. 
Nice one, Nina. Uh, if you remember that film with James Pearson and Caroline Ciavaldini like a couple of years ago, they're working that route. Uh, so if you want to see what's involved in climbing it, then do go and check out that film. It's got this overhanging bit at the top and that 8B pitch looks absolutely brutal. So nice one, Nina. And of course, there's a difference between sending 8B on the deck, you know, at normal sea temperature than doing it thousands and thousands of meters up high in the Alpine. So very impressive climb from Nina. Nice one. Now at the moment, send season seems to be here, even though it's the middle of summer and it's super hot and sweaty. So here's a roundup of a few notable ascents. Matteo Minardi has finished his sixth 9A with a send of underground in Arco, Italy. The notoriously overhanging route starts with boulder problems and finishes with some tension climbing. He finished the route after four days of work. American climber Jimmy Webb has been in Rockland, South Africa and crushing. Three 8B plus boulders in the last week, including the beautiful The Book Club. Caroline Sinhuber is also in Rocklands and she ticked two AA plus climbs, Black Shadow and the Wee Baby Seamus. Vadim Timurov has also been crushing Rocklands, but we're going to save that for the 9B counter. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, an apology. Uh, we are still experiencing the red pen issue. Um, it is currently a matter of internal investigation here at Epic TV. Uh, we have no idea who's stolen the red pen. Uh, Flo, who's behind the camera, is one of the prime suspects for the red pen thievery. But, but we're looking into it. Uh, no door is closed. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Now, people have been complaining about a purple pen. I've listened to them, so we're going to bring back the green pen until we find the red pen. I, we are on this, ladies and gentlemen, we are on it. Now, Vadim Timurov has climbed over 8C. Uh, it's called Noises Beauty in the Rockland, so he gets a tick. Uh, now, people have also been asking about a digitalized uh, 9B 8C counter. Uh, when I mentioned this to Flo, uh, he turned green and didn't want to type out this entire thing. Which is fair enough, I think frankly fair enough. So what I've done is I've taken the top four and it's very, very interesting because everyone is drawn so far on the AC counter. So Daniel Woods, six points. Uh, Giuliano Cameroni, six points. Raiho Camarana, Camar Rai Raiho Camarana, him, six points. Uh, and Jimmy Webb, also six points. So, top boulders of the world. It's time to step it up. We're more than halfway through the year now. December is fast approaching. And if you want to rise above that six, then now's your moment. 9B counter, my personal favorite. Lonely and empty. I think it's time the lead climbers stopped doing IFSC World Cup competitions and just crushed on some rock. Thank you. So let's chat about media on the Epic TV website. And we're used to Cold House Media swanning around the world, having a great time. But this one, frankly, takes the biscuit because Charlotte is in French Polynesia, bolting new routes, having a great time. And it just makes me jealous. My first impression when I got close to the rock is that it was super good quality with very interesting features. We had expansion bolts for the roots itself, but we had glue-ins for the anchors. So we split up our work, first bolting the root and then going back up for all the anchors. I'm in the sector my one, and we're putting up all the anchors. It's glue-in, so we have to be quite organized. I'm out of battery, so looks like I'm gonna have a special delivery. Marcos is coming up to the rescue. Order battery. Now, for the last couple of weeks, we've been putting out videos from the Arcteryx Alpine Academy. We had the Nina Caprez Portal Edge Big Wall thing. We had the Will Gad Alpine Mission that I did with him. And um, we've just put one up with Will Stanhope giving some trad tips. Thank you to Will. Will's a bit of a hero of mine, such a badass soloist, but he does occasionally clip into a rope and plug in some trad gear. So he gave us some trad tips. Here's a little teaser. A lot of people have different ideas of how to do this. Uh, I'd say the one big thing is just consistency. If you've got a plan and you've been doing it for a while, just stick with it because that's basically the most important thing when you're pumped out of your mind and trying to place gear. So what I like to do 
is I like to go with my smallest cams at the front because generally speaking, if you're in a tight crack, um, you're, it's gonna be harder. So I go like, a, in this case, a blue Metolius on one side. Basically, I'm just getting bigger and bigger as I go through my harness here. I like to go gates out. Not everybody likes to go gates out. It's just kind of my preferred method. Um, I find gates in sometimes when you're in a chimney that the beaners can unclip themselves, but you know, everybody's different. And again, the biggest thing is just consistency so that you can basically do it blind. There's a link in the description below if you want to check out more of Will's tips. It's especially useful if you're just coming into trad climbing and you want to know about more about racking and foot jams and hand jams. He just goes through all the basics, so it's a good place to start. Now, shop deals on the Epic TV shop and DMM and climbing technology is back in stock. So if you want some techie trad glear, glear? Some trekkie, techie, that's hot, techie trad gear, and now's the time to buy it. Uh, DMM rocks, fantastic bits of kit, as you know, climbing technology, loads of belay devices and things. So do go and check that out on the Epic TV shop. And it is worth checking back into it every now and again because we constantly put up deals. So if you're watching an item, waiting for it to go down in price, then regularly go back and have a look at the shop. Now, Hugo started this thing called Comment of the Week. Uh, he's not here, but I'm gonna continue it in his spirit. Uh, last week I rapped, and today I'm gonna sing a ballad. Comment of the week. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's beautiful, yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone, that's uh, just a moment for just me. Uh, this is from Israel and he says, I know this is the new show, but I'd like to watch an interview with IFSC official DJ. I'm so curious about their music selection, like that Robbie Williams song in the middle of Thompson's Ascent. Now I didn't hear the Robbie Williams song in the middle of Thompson's Ascent, I presume he's Molly Thompson on that one, uh, but it did kind of get me thinking about this. What would be your song of choice on an IFSC competition wall? Uh, there's many, are you gonna go for inspirational, angry music? Uh, a bit Linkin Park, perhaps, but my personal one would be Westlife's You Raise Me Up. <laughs> uh, I think it would fit in with the raising up the wall towards podium glory. So I would have a little word with the DJ and get him to like, just mix me a little remix, perhaps, of Westlife's You Raise Me Up. It's just a personal choice. Do let me know in the comments below what would be your DJ IFSC song of choice. Best one might win a prize, but probably not. That's it for this week. Thank you for watching my randomness. Uh, keep the comments coming because you might be on Comment of the Week next week and I'll see you soon.